So how did George W. Bush escape the curse of other presidential kids? A lot of bad stuff has oh, happened to yes, these children. Absolutely. And unfortunately, we'll hear about it in a second, because joining us now from our D.C. Bureau with insight into this fascinating area is Doug Weed, author of All the President's Children. Good morning, Doug, and thank you for joining us. Thanks, how, Judge. How Thanks, did, Steve. How did this terrific book, uh, which I've never seen anything like it before, <laughs> a summary of the successes and failures and happinesses and miseries of all the presidential children, how did this book come about? Well, I was working for George Bush Sr., his presidential campaign, but my immediate boss was George W. Bush, our mm. current president. And the election was over. His father had won. We're sitting in his office and uh, talking about who goes to the White House and who doesn't. He said, what's going to happen to me? And I said, well, you, you want me to do a memo on presidential kids? He said, yeah, find out. So wow. 15 years later, here's the book. Uh huh. And it wasn't like this was an official uh, request. He just, uh, it was kind of offhanded, and you'd been working for him so long, you just figured, and that was a, an extremely short inauguration, by the way. <laughs> just seeing those pictures. Yeah. You just figured you'd, you'd uh, help him out on this. It, it's interesting in your book, you talk about how at one point, uh, just as the presidential, this last uh, presidential campaign got started, George W. Bush was the front runner. And he was asked whether or not he was going to go ahead with it. And he said no because of his daughters. Yeah. And I said, uh, he said it would ruin their lives. They'd be in college. I said, well, did it ruin your life? And uh, he paused. He said, no, it made my life. Did but he's the exception. <laughs> yeah, he, he, is. He, he is. Because, of course, we've only had uh, one other father-son presidential pair, John Adams and John Quincy Adams. Tell us about a conversation, Doug, that you had with uh, President Bush, I guess at the time it was the future president, George H.W. Bush, about which was more difficult, being a sibling or being the pre of, of the president or being the president? Yes, he, uh, he's been asked that question many times, and, and each time he answers, it's harder uh, being the son of the candidate than it is being the candidate. Mm -hmm. What frightened me, Steve, is when, and Judge, when I turned this study into George W., I knew, and what I had learned, is that if you were the f named after your father, you died young. I mean, mm. John Adams II died an alcoholic at 31, William Henry Harrison Jr. at 35, Andrew Johnson Jr. at 26, Calvin Coolidge Jr. at 16, mm. Andrew Jackson Jr. after a hunting accident. So I was into this study about 10 years when uh, JFK Jr. disappeared over the Atlantic, and I had chills go down my spine. I thought, this is not a coincidence of history, these guys are under tremendous stress from the time they're little kids. People say, why don't you run for the president? And it right. kills some of them. Let, let's look at the flip side of a tragedy. Who was probably the most successful uh, in terms of having a really rich, full life of the uh, presidential children? Well, there have been many, and GW's life isn't over. He's been pretty successful so far. Yes, yeah. he has. I mean, Leo Tolstoy says, uh, everybody wants to change humanity. No one's willing to change themselves. And GW woke up one morning and said, I'm never going to take another drink the rest of my life. He was headed that way mm -hmm. of the other young people. He changed. Uh, Webb Hayes, his story is just fantastic. I mean, a swashbuckling multimillionaire hero, founder of what became Union Carbide, soldier of fortune in battles in the Crimea and during the middle of the Boxer Rebellion and all over the world, wins the Medal of Honor. Hollywood couldn't invent a story like him. How about uh, Robert Lincoln? Ooh, that's a, Ooh, that's a deep and fascinating story with many layers. He, he hired detectives to follow his mother. The judge would appreciate his story to have her put in an insane asylum mm, right. and used as evidence against her the fact that she thought she was being followed. Yeah. Wow. Speaking of being followed, uh, when Chelsea Clinton was <laughs> in uh, the White House as the first daughter, her parents made it really clear, Doug, that the press needed to stay away from her and let her grow up. Of course, the Bush girls have not gotten exactly that same treatment. Uh, tell us a little bit about Chelsea that we don't know. Well, uh, I was surprised. The Clintons come off as pretty good parents because they did an awful lot of things exactly right. For example, they were criticized by many for their prep sessions with Chelsea, where they prepared her for the type of criticism they were both going to experience when they, when they ran for the president, when he ran for the president. And um, she fled the room in tears in one of those stories. But that's exactly the right thing to do. Too many of these kids come to this moment totally unprepared. Their mom and dad have thousands of counselors. 
every nuance is parsed and the kids are upstairs having to figure it out on their own. Yeah, wow. it's all detailed in a great book. It's called All the President's Children. It is by Doug Weed. Doug Weed, thank you very much for Thank you. Just made the New York it. Times bestseller list. Oh, congratulations, Doug. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Thanks for Judge. joining us this right. morning.